Hey guys, it's Landon Blake with Redefined Horizons, and this is the third video in the set of videos I'm doing today about contract budget management. And in the last video, we went in and we updated our spreadsheet, our contract budget management spreadsheet. We updated the notes and timeline uh, tab with the information that we put in Basecamp. We added this first invoice to the uh, billing tab. Uh, we didn't touch the remaining task tab, but we got into the extra work tracker and made a note here of some extra work that we did that wasn't spelled out in a written scope. And then uh, we added a few rows here for some anticipated extra work that's going to be coming up. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to go over this uh, billing detail sheet. Now, the amount of detail you need in your billing detail sheet may change depending on the type of job you're doing. So for example, uh, if your work is lump sum, uh, you might not need hardly any detail here at all. Uh, so let me clarify that. On lump sum projects, so if you're just billing your client an overall fee for the work, uh, generally the client does not ask you for a bunch of detail on their invoice, and they really shouldn't because it's lump sum, and if you're over, it's your problem, not their problem. Um, however, when you're working on a time and materials job or time and materials not to exceed job, uh, the client is going to want some detail on their invoices. And uh, one of the, the tricky things... I'm trying to think of how I want to explain this. So one of the tricky things we have is we have um, we have two types of projects. So we've got lump sum, and then we've got time and materials, right? So on a lump sum project, you generally don't have to provide a bunch of details on where your money was spent for the client. However, you may want to track that internally. So you might want to know, is your field work costing more than your drafting? or you're spending more on the boundary than you're spending on the topo. But the client usually doesn't care if it's lump sum. If it's time and materials, especially if it's time and materials not to exceed by phase, um, then, you're, then your client's going to want some, uh, some billing detail. And so what I'm going to do here in this video is I'm going to show you how to um, track that detail when you do your billing. Okay, so what I've got here, let me, let me walk you through this sheet. So what I've got here, this, sorry, this should not be the date. This should be the uh, task. So this is the task. And in, in the front of the task, I just prefixed the contract. So OC stands for original contract. ASR stands for additional service request. So in this case, I've got all this original contract work that I've already built out. And I didn't break that down by invoice. I just said, hey, here's my previous invoices because that's all been billed. Okay, and now I'm working on this ASR, so I, I want it. Now, this was lump sum, and then the client switched to T&M not to exceed. So that's why this spreadsheet got a little more important, and that's why I don't have a bunch of detail on, on every invoice that we sent for the original contract. But now we're going to bill ASR, so I need to track it. Uh, I need to track how much money we're billing to each phase of the job, so each one of these tasks is a phase on each invoice, and you're going to see how that works in the spreadsheet. Now, I do have a little note here on my topo phase. I just made a comment. Uh, if we end up being, getting cleared to do our UAV aerial survey, this number is going to go down, but for now, I'm going to leave it. Okay. So previous invoices right here, we're just going to zero those out because this is just for the original contract. Okay. And then what I do is I have a, I just have a column here for each invoice. And, in, and under each invoice, we're going to mark how much we have to bill or how much we build on that invoice for each of these tasks, and then it's going to total and give us the remaining budget. And I probably already lost you in this video. Don't worry. I'm going to explain it um, as, you, as we work through this example. And then I, I'll, I'll, I'm going to do a whiteboard video, too, about the different types of projects and, and how they can be built. All right, so I've only sent one invoice so far on ASR1, which you can see, if you remember from the last video, that's this invoice right here. It's this invoice number, which I'm going to copy. So what that means is we should have an invoice noted here and we should have some dollar values in. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And then you'll see it's going to it's going to give us our budget totals. Let's go ahead and copy these formulas down. So 
what we're going to do is paste in this invoice number. Oop. Oh, doesn't want to let me do that. Um, uh, it is one two zero eight eight two. Okay, so these are just X'd out because I haven't sent these invoices yet. So this is my first invoice. There's the invoice number. Okay, and we're gonna plug in some dollar values here. I already added my budgets when I got my ASR approved. Okay, so we're gonna indicate now what we're gonna bill on each one of these. Okay, so I'm gonna look at my invoice here, and uh, I'm gonna enter these dollar values. Okay, so I've got the invoice in front of me. You can't see it because it's paper. Okay, so the uh, on phase two, this land title and ownership exhibits. Okay, I've billed on my first bill. We billed five nine oh three, so that's what we charged them on that one. Okay. All right, and then uh, the the lease parcel land description package. That next phase, I billed four thousand and six on this invoice. Okay, and that's it for the for this invoice. So what that means is I can zero these out. Okay, now if you come over here and look, what that tells you is, so this sums up everything you build for that. Everything you build for this task on that job, it sums the, the amount billed on all the invoices and it lets you know what your balance is. Okay, so I've got $97 left on the ownership exhibit. So that's basically billed in full. I went over six bucks on the lease parcel description, so that's billed in full. And what this tells me is I've got $7,000 and $8,000 left on these other two tasks, okay? And they also gave me a budget here for for this additional services work. And uh, that's not entered. Let's go find that and plug that in. So if you open up the ASR folder, nope, I didn't put it in there. Where? It should be in here, and I'm just not doing a good job. So, nope, nope, it's right here. It's this purchase order. So let's go find that dollar amount. Okay, so right here, the allowance for potential future items was 15 grand. So let's go ahead and plug that into our spreadsheet. Okay, so we'll plug that in here. Okay. Now, I don't have a second invoice because we haven't worked that much on the project le yet, but let's just say for kicks and giggles, just for the sake of this example, that we've sent a second invoice. So we're going to fast forward in time a month, and I'm just going to dummy up an invoice here, invoice number, and let's just say that we've done some more work. Okay, so let's say we did another $1,200 of work on this lease parcel description, and we did $3,000 worth of work on that, and... I know I did some work here. I did probably $3,500 worth of work, okay? Now, let's let's see what happens there. So what's happening is this is being totaled across. All these cells are being totaled. So we've added another invoice here. So what that tells you is that $1,200 I spent on this lease parcel land description package, I didn't have that money. I went over, okay? And I'm not going to be able to build a client for that because this is TNM not to exceed. And here we can see I spent three grand, but I got four grand left. Okay, because I had a $7,000 budget. So what it's doing is it's summing these numbers here. Okay, so it's summing column C to I, subtracting it from the contract budget here, and it's giving you the balance. Okay. All right, so again, let's just say we get another invoice. So we'll dummy this up. Okay, and man, I had to do some more changes on that lease parcel description, and I did another $2,600 worth of work here, and I did another $3,500 worth of work here on this invoice, okay? So now what that's telling me is, hey, now I'm over $1,700. I got $1,400 left here, and I got $8,000 left here, okay? So this, this dynamically updates. All right, so that's how that works. I'm just going to back these changes out because I haven't really done this work yet. So this is really important, this information, uh, when you're working on a job that's being billed, not uh, time and materials not to exceed by phase, so you don't have one bucket. They're going to track. They're going to make sure you don't exceed every bucket. It's really important that your people bill the right time. Now, if you get into a situation, let's just say, let's just say that we build uh, 6,500 here. You know what? Let me, un let me undo this for a sec. No. no it's not going to let me. Uh, let's just say we had this next invoice. 
and uh, we build 1,200 here, and we build uh, 4,200 here. And let's say I know this work is done. That's where this uh, remaining task sheet becomes important. We're not going to look at it in this video, but let's assume this task is done. Okay, and I'm over 1,206 here, and I'm under 2,800 here. Well, I, I don't want to... <laughs> What I don't want to do is I don't want to build this. Um, I'm actually not going to be able to do this. So I'm going to have this time is going to be charged to the job, but I'm not going to be able to put it on this invoice because I'm over. I'm over my budget. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to move this time down to this other task. Okay, so this 1200 is going to come down here and this is going to become 5400. Okay, if you're allowed to do that and most of the time you are. So you can move some time around. If we went a little over on this task and we went a little under on that task, as long as you don't go over the bucket for each task, you can move some time around. Okay, so I just wanted to show you guys that. All right, so now you understand how this billing details spreadsheet works. And it's really just a tool to make sure that you're not um, going over your budget on your individual tasks on a TNM and uh, not to exceed job. And, it'll, and it, it helps you figure out where you can move time if you're a little under on some tasks and a little over on others. This spreadsheet can help you understand where you can move time so it can be billed. All right, guys, thanks for watching the video. And uh, yeah, we definitely need to do a, a whiteboard video on the type of billing, uh, billing types for projects. So I'll, I'll get that on my list. Thanks.